Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel and welcome to my kitchen. Today's video I'm going to be doing a $5 dinners video and um, yeah let's just jump right into it. So for this first dish it's going to be a sausage and rice dish. I'm using about half of a bell pepper. You can use any color about half of an onion. I would use a whole onion if I had a whole onion. Uh, one can of diced tomatoes and I picked up this pack of Italian sausages. They were five for a dollar and for this dinner I'm going to be using two of the sausages so that works out to about a dollar a sausage and guys all of the other pricing will be in the description box down below and it will be in Canadian dollars. So to start, I'm just popping those two sausages into the oven to bake. And then I'm just taking my enameled cast iron skillet onto the stove and I'm going to just let it heat up here with a little bit of olive oil. And then I'm just gonna go in and chop up my onion And then I'm going to do the same thing with this bell pepper. And then I realized this could definitely use some garlic. You don't need to use garlic if you don't have it or if you have powdered garlic, that would be fine as well. I'm just chopping up a few cloves here. And then I'm going to pop my onion into the skillet just to soften up a little bit. And I'm going to leave that in there for about five minutes with the lid on. And now once those onions have softened up, I'm going to add just a pat of butter to the pan. And then I'm going to toss in my garlic and my bell pepper. Then I'm just seasoning with a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And then I'm just going to give everything a quick toss. And then I'm going to put, pop that lid back on and I'm going to let everything soften up for about another five minutes. And while that is happening, I'm going to just measure out the amount of rice that I want. And for this recipe, I'm using like a heaping third of a cup of basmati rice. So now that those veggies are soft enough, I am popping the rice in and I'm just going to let it kind of toast for a little bit. So I'm just going to give it a good stir. And guys, I do want to mention I totally forgot to rinse my rice, so don't forget to rinse your rice. But this will still be delicious, and it was delicious. So about five minutes later, I've opened up that can of tomatoes, and I'm just popping it right in there with all of the juices. And you can use any can of diced tomatoes. So then I'm giving that a quick stir. And now because I used about a third of a cup of rice, well, a little bit more than that, I am going to add a third of a cup of water just so that there's enough liquid for the rice to cook in. And this is totally optional, but I find it adds a lot of extra flavor. I'm taking a little bit of chicken stock and I just do about a teaspoon. And then I'm just giving it a good stir, popping that lid back on, and I'm going to let it simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes. And here is what it looks like, and it smells amazing at this point. So now I'm turning that off. It'll still continue to cook a little bit in there and my sausages look done. So I'm going to turn off the oven, take out the sausages, really roughly chop them up.
and then once they are chopped up to my liking I'm just going to pop them right into that skillet with everything else and give it a really really good stir and then it is done and ready to eat and oh my goodness this is so yummy it's so yummy and it's so stinking easy <laughs> I highly recommend trying it out one thing I will say is that this is really really yummy with a little dollop of sour cream so totally unnecessary if you don't have it or maybe if you have some plain Greek yogurt that would be good too but there it is Okay, so now uh, it is the next day and we are on to dinner number two. So again, for this meal, I'm using two of the sausages, about three carrots, about three potatoes. You can use any kind of potato, another can of those diced tomatoes. And then I am going to use uh, from my pantry, I don't really include these in the total price, but I am going to use from the pantry an onion and some garlic. And then I am going to use some of this uh, frozen corn and frozen green beans. I got two of those bags for three bucks so I'm just measuring out a third of a cup of both roughly um, into this cup just to keep on the side so it's ready to go when I need it and now I'm taking out the two sausages that I'm going to use for this meal and then I'm just taking them out of the casing and chopping them up and frying them up in this pan here And while the sausage is cooking, I am going to grate my carrots, or peel my carrots, I guess, and peel my potatoes. And then I'm just going to chop those up roughly. So now the sausage is browned enough, it is ready to be popped into the slow cooker. And now I'm just popping those chopped potatoes and carrots into the slow cooker as well. Now in that same skillet that I cooked up the sausage in, I'm just heating up a little bit of olive oil and I'm going to roughly chop up that onion and soften it a bit in the pan before tossing it into the slow cooker. And I'm also going to chop up about three cloves of garlic and toss them in there as well. So about five minutes later, once those are softened up a little bit, I'm again tossing those right into the slow cooker with everything else. I'm just going to give it a little stir. And then I am going to add in that can of diced tomatoes, all of the juices. And again, I'm reaching for my trusty chicken stock. This is totally optional. If you don't have it, you don't need to add it. But again, it does add a nice flavor. So I'm adding in a cup of water just because this is a soup, so we need more liquid, and then a heaping teaspoon of chicken stock powder. But again, you could just add the water and you would be fine. So then I'm just seasoning with some salt and pepper, giving everything a good stir. And I decided I had dried oregano, so I decided to pop about two teaspoons in as well, and it ended up being really, really nice. So if you have like dried thyme or dried oregano, maybe pop a little bit of that in as well. But again, it is totally optional. So then I'm putting it on high for four hours, and I'm just setting these veggies by the side. I'll pop them in when we're about an hour away from the soup being finished, because I don't want them to get too soft. And so here is our finished soup. It smells good. <laughs> it smells really good. So this is the finished product. You could top it with grated cheese. You could even add some sour cream if you wanted, but we just left it as is. And it was super, super filling, super savory. And yeah, my husband loved it. Welcome back to another day in my kitchen. Here is the third and final meal. Again, using up that package of sausage, we are doing kind of like a leveled up mac and cheese. So um, 
I had originally bought like a 77 cent box of mac and cheese from Walmart for this video, but my husband ate it as a late night snack. So pretend that this is a much cheaper box of mac and cheese, please. And then we are using the last sausage and about half a bag of this frozen broccoli. So just like for the soup, I took this last sausage out of its casing and I'm just frying it up and doing kind of like a ground sausage in this pan while my water is boiling for the pasta. And then I've sectioned out about half of that bag of broccoli. I'm just, I added a little bit of water to the bowl. I'm just gonna heat it up enough that I can chop it. So putting it in for about four minutes. You can see my sausage is done and on the warming element there and I'm just adding my pasta to the boiling water. And while that pasta is cooking, I am chopping up my broccoli. You do not have to cut off the stalks. I just don't like broccoli stalks, so I leave them out, but you do you. <laughs> so the pasta is cooked and drained, and now I am making the broccoli sausage cheese sauce. So I have the element on low. And I am using some sour cream instead of milk. That is my big hot tip. <laughs> of the day. Don't use milk in your mac and cheese. Use sour cream and it will change your life. It is seriously so good. So I'm adding a hefty pat of butter and about, I don't know, what would I say? Maybe two to three tablespoons of sour cream, mixing that all together. And then, oh, my other hot tip is to add some mustard to your mac and cheese cheese sauce. Uh, I can't even explain how much better it makes it. Just try it. Let me know if you like it. So I'm just mixing that all together. And then once it is all smooth like this, just popping in that cheese that comes in the box. And then just stirring it until it's all mixed in and smooth and creamy and delicious. And then it's as easy as popping in the broccoli and popping in the sausage. And I'm gonna let uh, the broccoli and the sausage kind of cook up a little bit in the cheese sauce for about five minutes, just so everything is nice and warm because I did only just quickly warm up that broccoli in the microwave. And then once the sauce is heated up enough, I am just adding in the pasta, giving it all a really, really good stir. And it is done and ready to eat and so yummy. This is like ultimate quick comfort food for us. Um, I always like to add some veggies and a protein into our mac and cheese just because I feel like it makes it a little bit healthier. Plus it kind of beefs it up if you're making mac and cheese for two adults. But yeah, that is that. I hope you guys like this video. Leave me a comment down below if you try any of this dishes. These dishes, I should say. And um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.